Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. We'll be making traditional Guyanese cook-up. And Guyanese cook-up is made um, old years, new years usually. And it's usually made up of all the old peas or meat that you may have left over from Christmas. And vegetables that you may have around the house. Usually a green vegetable. This one you see in the picture is made of dal. But the one that we'll be making today is made of mixed hey peas. Well, it's old year's night, and this is traditional for our family to make cook-up. And you've seen me make beef cook-up. I'm sorry that video was not that great because it uh, was my first video. And, uh, you know, when you do things for the first time, it's not always that great. Um, just going to show you here. I got my bread rising, and I still got my pepper pot going. Boop, boop. Okay, back to what we were going to talk about. I got my peas soaking here for about four hours now. And I'm seasoning up. This is pork, some pigtail, some ribs, and some shank, pork shank meat, um, boneless. And I have here about three pounds of meat. So here I have four cups of... Um, peas so I'm going to add four cups of rice right remember it's one cup of peas to one cup of rice and the meat it's entirely up to you um, the pigtail I've washed it I've cut it up into this size uniform sizes and to it I added some garlic powder some onion powder salt black pepper some thyme. I had some dried married man, so I threw it in, but you don't have to do that. Um, I have here a frozen ice cube of garlic and weary peppers. Um, I, I just blend these off and it's easier for me to grab it and put it in. Because uh, in the summer when I get fresh garlic, this is the best way to preserve it. Um, letting it dry. I have some drying here, you can see, from my backyard, but they're starting to get dry. If you've ever seen garlic dry, it gets powdery. So I'm going to have to cook those out, but this is a good way to do it. I just blend equal amounts of garlic and pepper together, and I freeze them in ice cubes, the same thing I sort of do for my curry paste. Um, that recipe is also on my YouTube channel. If you like and subs uh, subscribe, you'll be able to access all of those videos. Okay, so I'm going to season this up, toss it up a bit, and then we'll get started. Alrighty, guys, so our meat is, has been seasoned. And now I'm going to take a little scoop of coconut oil. I like to use coconut oil. Again, it's authentic to the region, which is Guyana. We're making cook up today. And pork is my meat of choice. But again, you can use lamb. I know some people make goat. I've never had that, but I heard that uh, that's possible. Beef is very popular. But today I'm going to do pork and pigtail because that's my hubby's favorite. Okay. Um, so now that this oil has melted I'm first going to add the meat because I want it to fry up a little okay. now if you didn't have a pressure pot I would just do this in a separate pot but instead of 20 minutes which is what it's going to take me it will take you about maybe an hour an hour and 20 minutes it's not so much that the meat needs to tenderize it's the peas peas sometimes take a very long time to boil so if you had fresh peas then I'd go ahead and just skip this whole pressure pot um, section and and do it from that in the summertime I do have fresh peas in my other video, you'll see that um, I made it with some fresh peas and made up the difference with dried peas. Okay, you can see here, 
I have my bread going, so I'm double tasking today because um, I want to have some fresh bread to go with my leftover pepper pot. Now that this is browned a bit, I'm going to add in the peas. And I'm going to add some hot water. And I'm just going to fill the meat up about an inch above the meat line. And I'm going to cover it down and let it pressure. Once it starts whistling, 20 minutes from then, it'll be finished. So here we are, one inch above the meat line. I added about a teaspoon and a half of salt to the meat already, but I'm just gonna add another teaspoon for the beans. That way the salt gets infused into the beans. As well as yellow split pea, mixed pea, pigeon pea is also a very famous cookup. As long as you have peas, the and possibilities are endless. Okay, so we're gonna cut up our seasoning now. Um, I've added just four more cloves of garlic, one weary pepper, and some broadleaf thyme here that I had um, growing. And I'm gonna add one onion. And this is going to be my other meat that I'm gonna add. Normally, uh, you see me add um, salt fish. Um, sometimes I add salt beef, sometimes I add salt pork. Today, because it's the holidays and I have it, and it's really good in pepper in a cook-up, is um, garlic pork. So I'm going to take this out. I'm not gonna wash it. I'm just gonna drain all the vinegar from it. And when I go to fry up my rice and my seasoning, I'm going to be using garlic pork as a source of flavor today. So if you look at my other video, you'll see that I use salt fish with my beef cookup. Entirely up to you. This is all layering of flavors. And if you do have garlic pork and you'd like to put in your cookup, I suggest you do it. It's, it's great flavor and it's really, really delicious. So here's my garlic pork. It smells really delicious. Um, I've removed almost half the bottle, so it's probably gonna give me about a pound. And you can see it still has a married man, still has some time, and all that I'm still going to put into the cook-up. Just more flavor. And the salt beef, um, the salt beef would give it that flavor. Um, salt fish would give it that flavor. Salted pigtails would give it that flavor, but today I'd like to use garlic pork and it's going to be delicious. Please wash and prepare any vegetables like okra, spinach, kale that you will like to add to your cook-up. I'm adding kale and spinach today. Oh my goodness, guys. So I needed some green onion and it's... The last day of the year, believe it or not, I just picked this huge broccoli, another one here at the bottom. Lots of greens from the garden. Looks like it's gonna be a great 2021. Blessings already. Now add your garlic pork to the pot, brown it off. Then we're gonna add our washed rice, onions, garlic, pepper, and thyme mixture. Saute for two minutes. Once that's nice and coated in the fat of the pork and coconut oil, please add your liquid mixture that's in your pressure pot. That's the pork, the beans, and the liquid. We're gonna try to make sure the liquid is one inch above the rice. If not, this is the time that you would add some warm or hot water hot water preferably, bring it up to the top of the rice one inch. I added four cups of water to mine. Yours will be different depending on how much liquid you have. Okay. 
Okay, so okay. we've added our pressure pot so we've added meat, our pepper to the pot. pot meat to the pot. I think I got rid of my pot spoon. I'll just grab another one. I like to use wooden pot spoons because in these type of pots, you don't want to scratch it. Um, even though they sell them in the store saying they're just indestructible, they once you scratch the enamel, it just starts going from there. So wood spoons are always a best option. So I'm gonna add one can of coconut milk. Okay. That's a must. You must add coconut milk. I'd have never tried almond milk if for people allergic, but coconut milk is a must in cook up. And believe it or not, I just picked all of this from the backyard. Can you believe Canada? And it's Old Year's Day, almost January, and I got kale, I got some spinach, I got some green onions. Blessings, people. Looks like it's going to be a good year already. So I'm going to put that in there. It smells really good. I forgot to go to the grocery store today. And I really, since COVID, I'm trying not to go to the grocery store. I'm sure with most of you. Um, again, because I don't have fresh tomato, I'm just going to add a couple of these sun-dried tomatoes. The recipe for the sun-dried tomatoes, for those of you that garden and get an excess amount of tomato, um, the recipe for how I do that is also on my page. So if you like and subscribe to this recipe, you will get access to all of that. Okay, so now that and sun-dried tomatoes, are just like tomatoey flavor times 12. So just imagine in this time of year, what you buy at the grocery store, it's just a watered down tomato. It doesn't really have any flavor. You could see how my sun-dried tomatoes have colored the pot already. If you added fresh tomatoes, would you get that same effect? I don't think so. So now I wanna add a little bit of salt. For four cups of rice, maybe two teaspoons of salt will be good. Plus, we also have the saltiness from the garlic pork. If you made it with salt beef, you'd have to think about that kind of adjustment. Um, if you made it with salt fish, that would also add a lot of salt. I don't want to add too much. I can always add a little later. Okay. So now I'm just gonna cover this down that it's steamed up and give it 20 minutes. It's been about 20 minutes and our cook up is still boiling. It's getting to that point where the rice is getting cooked. If you found at this point that you have too much water, like it doesn't look like mine, then you wanna leave the lid on. Now I'm going to let this cook for another five to eight minutes, depending, and then take it off. Now I'm just going to taste it. Don't mind they're having dinner. To see if it has enough salt. I think it needs like a little more of a teaspoon of salt. What are you guys laughing at? Mm -hmm. ah! Can't get the salt open. Okay. It's about a teaspoon. And now I'm gonna let it cook open for about five minutes and pretty much it's done because it's gonna dry down from here as it cools and you'll get that more of a loose rice texture. If you like your cook up a little bit more soppy, do it with a little bit more water than that, okay? And there you go, cook up is finished, enjoy.